Gude. Hi. Can you see my beautiful hair? Hm? Me neither. And before I try to resolve all that dependency issues and struggling on dependency resolving, I had long and beautiful hair. No, I had. But you get the point. So I struggled with uh, resolving dependencies. And uh, so, as I'm personally, I'm using NVIDIA's Jetson Xavier AJ. AGX uh, platform for my text-to-speech model training and um, nicely uh, NVIDIA um, provides Docker images for, um, for machine learning and stuff like that. So I thought, hmm, why shouldn't I give this image a try and check if I can run Koki's text-to-speech latest stable version, which is version 0.1.3, on a Docker image on my Jetson device. So this technical walkthrough is for all those people who are using a Jetson device and would like to um, play around with Koki's text-to-speech repo. So have fun, have a nice day, and bye! I played a little bit around on setting up Koki text-to-speech for new model training on my uh, NVIDIA Jetson Xavier AGX device. And I did this previously by setting up a new Python virtual environment and resolving all the issues manually. But then I saw that NVIDIA provides um, uh, Docker container images for special use cases such as machine learning. And so I have decided to give these container images a try and would like to see if I can bring Koki's text-to-speech code base up and running for model training within that prepared uh, NVIDIA uh, container. And to show you the beginning, I have uh, opened uh, uh, the web page by NVIDIA where they show some information on their container registry or their container images. And here's one for the machine learning stuff. And you can see some deta details and you can easily pull that image and start playing around with it. So here you can see which libraries or which dependencies are already included in that Docker image. So I took this image as my personal, as my base image and added that Koki um, stuff upon or on top of that. So to show you what I mean or what I did the last days is I jumped to my GitHub repo, Thorsten Müller Deep Learning German TTS, and then in the subfolder helper scripts. And here's a docker file dot Jetson Koki. Let's open this one up and let's copy the raw URL and I will switch to my uh, Jetson, NVIDIA Jetson device. So, oh, for example, let's go to the temp directory and make a docker. Ah, before um, I start with the, the, the process itself, I uh, recommend you to add your personal user to the Docker group on the system so you do not need to, uh, or no sudo is required on every Docker related command. I did that previously, so I do not need to add a sudo on every Docker command. So then let's download my Jetson file, my Docker file. And so that's that's easy. And uh, let's take a look to that file. As I said, I take this image, which is provided by NVIDIA. Let's check this one. Where is it? Here. Huh? As my base image, uh, add some repositories, update some uh, special libraries or dependencies, setting some environment variables 
and then added a command line argument called Koki branch because um, I do not want to add a fixed branch name or tag in the Docker file. So you can enter the special branch or version tag you would like to use within the command line. Then running some Python package handling and satisfying Koki's TTS requirements and uh, latest uh, start and that's taken from the original Docker file from NVIDIA uh, to bring a Jupyter Notebook instance up and running. So that is the Docker file itself. Um, I've added in the readme in the helper scripts directory where is it? Um, small documentation, nothing fancy, just a quick writing on the steps I did. And what I did then is uh, run NVIDIA Docker with the build command, uh, our Docker file name, and the build argument. And that's the, the, the thing I mentioned, the Koki branch. That is the current latest version, 0.1.3. And I will tag my container image with Jetson Koki. So let's give this a try on my Jetson instance. Okay, so as I did that previously, um, that <laughs> was really fast. When you run it, it will take uh, probably several minutes. So let's check NVIDIA Docker container list. So as you can see, I have no container running right now. So let's go to my professional documentation here. Um, one important aspect is um, a container is nothing persistent, as probably most of you will know. And if you would like to um, bring your data set into your container or you run your training you will want to write the checkpoints not within your container because it's lost when the container is stopped you would like to bring it outside on, a, on your host's file system which is persistent um, you need to um, to put an argument minus a we and make, make a mapping from a directory structure on your host system and the path was in your container. So let's copy that one. What this will do, it will run a new Docker instance and will expose port 8888 because that is the port where Jupyter Notebook is listening. Uh, and it will provide, in my case, 32 gigabytes, so the complete memory of the system to that container. That might depend on your personal use case, but that is a, um, an argument you can or might adjust. And that's the using all GPUs, map your volume into the container, and that's the name of the tag of the Jetson uh, Koki tag of the container image. So let's go here and replace that with my current path on the system which is not this which is uh, this is D um, <laughs> this so I'm going to map this local path into my container under slash koki slash tts slash data. So let's bring up the container. Okay, and let's check NVIDIA Docker container ls. So we now have an up and running container and, and we exposed our port. 8888. So before connecting on a bash within the container, I would like to show you um, that the Jupyter, or hopefully the Jupyter notebook is running. So I'm gonna go to my 
AGX system on the port 8888. Yeah. Uh, the password is preset by NVIDIA, so it's NVIDIA, but you can override it within the Docker file. But I stick with the default, so it's NVIDIA. No, not save. So, as you can see right now, we have our Jupyter environment ready and um, the base path is already set to the cloned Koki TTS repository. So you can just jump in the notebook section, for example, dataset analysis, and open and run uh, the notebooks that are provided by Koki. So, well, that might be another chapter. I would just, uh, well, I wanted to show you that it's really easy to open the notebook there. And as we mapped our um, local system storage within our container under the data subdirectory, when I now open my, my data, I now have the system, the files that are persistent from my host system. So that's really nice and helpful and important. So, but that's not the point. Just wanted to show you the, that Jupyter Notebooks can be accessed quite easily. What I would like to do is I would like to jump in the container, open a bash there and start the training. So let's go to my professionally super documentation, running bash into the container. So, um, what I can do now is, or what I should do because I think the name is not working here, so I paste in my running container ID and you can see now I'm connected on my AJ, AGX system by Torsten at AGX and when I jump into that I'm now within my container. So I'm in my base directory Koki TTS and here is the well-known structure from git clone version 1.0.1.3 of Koki TTS. So let's go to my TTS bin folder for example um, and what can I show? Let's run a compute statistics with my config path. That's Koki TTS. You can find this Koki TTS directory in my Docker file. So if you would like to change that, feel free to do that. So Koki TTS, then in my data, and I have a Tekatron 2 DCA JSON configuration file. And an out, out path is required too. Let's go with Koki TTS data, so it's persistent even if the container is ended. Um, let's make new stats numpy and give this one a try. Yeah. So as you can see, we are in our container. Um, compute statistics is running and it would persist my uh, statistics in that shared or mapped volume. Okay, it's going fast, but I will cancel that because I had trained the stats numpy file before. So I will cancel that one and let's start a training, train TTS. And here we have just the config path, and again it's Koki, it's GTS, it's data, and it's my JSON file. So I've set my stats path in my map volume with my, with my previously computed statistics. So 
training is, uh, is uh, going to going to start and um, yeah that's probably that's probably it you can wait a few seconds just that you see the process is really starting and not ending just after a few seconds But I hope I'm trustworthy, so I let this process uh, on previous tests, I let it run for, let's say, an hour, just to check if the process is, um, uh, is running. So I will cancel that one. And let's go to my... And you can see I'm still in my, in my container. I will go to my mapped volume and in my output DCA folder there's um, okay two two versions just to show you I'll create an empty file keep this so I've created an empty file keep this and if I'm leaving my container now so I'm back on, on my AGX host system and go to my um, to my mapped base directory and then in the output DCA you see I have that file. So that's an important point. So please use a mapped volume because you do not want to lose all your checkpoints once your container crashes. So I hope that's helpful for, uh, for you and that's it. Wishing you the best. Have a nice rest of the day and bye-bye.